One of the standout announcements from ZW at NEF earlier this year was the ASI 2600mm Air, the monochrome version of their 2600MC Air model, which launched last fall. Both cameras use the IMX571 APS-C sensor and both come in ZWO's all-in-one Air configuration. That means you get a cooled pro-level astro camera, a built-in guidance sensor, the full ASI Air control system, integrated all into a single unit. The camera is now available to order alongside the ASI 585MC Air, which I've also tested and reviewed. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it down below or up here. Definitely worth checking out, but right now we're going to dive into how the ASI 2600mm Air performs and whether it's the right choice or not for your setup. I'm out here on my balcony. It is not perfect right now, but I'm trusting the weather app. It says it should clear up by nightfall. So let's get into it. My name is Lutza and you're watching the Space Koala. So how is the ASI 2600mm Air different from the previous models we've seen? First, let's recap. We started with the original ASI 2600mm Pro a few years ago, and then last year they released the 2600mm Duo, and now we have the 2600mm Air. What all those models have in common is the same core, the Sony IMX571 monochrome sensor. It is an APS-C sensor with 26 megapixels and 3.76 micron pixels. So the imaging performance itself is exactly the same across all versions. What sets them apart is everything else around the sensor. With the Duo model, ZWO introduced the integrated guiding sensor, which was a Sony IMX220 mono chip, which already reduced the need for extra gear. But now with the MM Air, they've taken it a step further. In addition to the main and guiding sensors, the MM Air also has the full ASI Air Mini system built directly into the camera. This turns it into a true all-in-one unit, streamlining your entire setup. So what can you eliminate? Thanks to the built-in guide sensor, you don't need a separate guide scope, an off-axis guider, or a guide camera. That also means you don't have an extra cable between your guiding camera and your control system. And because the ASI Air is built into the camera, you no longer have a separate ASI Air unit or any power or USB cables running from the camera into it. That's already three fewer cables and two fewer devices. But it doesn't stop there. If you use certain ZWO components, you can make the setup even cleaner. The camera supports Bluetooth, so if you're using a ZWO AM3 or AM5N mount, which also support Bluetooth, you can skip the USB cable between the camera and the mount, which I have here, and they'll just communicate wirelessly. And as we saw earlier this year at NEF, ZWO is about to release the EAF Pro, which is the new battery-powered wireless focus motor. That means you'll be able to focus your telescope without any cables at all. Just one more step towards a truly minimal tangle-free rig. In theory, the fewer cables you have, the fewer things that can go wrong or get snagged in the dark. That is provided that all the wireless connection is working reliably. While we wait for nightfall, let me walk you through the setup I've put together here. The 2600mm Air is a monochrome camera. That means, while it's not strictly mandatory, you're almost certainly going to want to use a filter wheel for proper imaging. So yes, you will have at least one cable running from the camera into the filter wheel. After unboxing the camera, the first thing I did was install the filters. The filter wheel and filters aren't included 
you'll need to purchase those separately. And because the ASI Air system is integrated, you're basically locked into using the ZWO filter wheel models. One important consideration here, with the original 2600mm Pro, you could get away with using 36mm filter wheels, but because the air has the integrated guide sensor, you now need at least the 2-inch filter wheel and the 2-inch filters. That does increase the total cost of the setup, so that is something to keep in mind. So that's actually what I've done here. I'm using the 7 position 2-inch CWO filter wheel with the full LRGB SHO set of ZWO filters. As for everything else that comes within the box, it is the usual ZWO package, the smart camera itself, all the standard cables, spacer rings, uh, an adapter, a velcro strap, an allen wrench, and a carrying bag. Everything you need to get started really, apart from the filter wheel. And now, as for assembling everything, ZWO offers a few different spacer combinations depending on your setup. If you're not adding any further accessories, you can simply stack the two included spacer rings and you're good to go. But like I mentioned earlier, with a monochrome camera, you're surely gonna use a filter wheel. So you'll need to swap out the 21 millimeter spacer ring for that. The easiest way to install the filter wheel is to just screw it directly onto the factory installed tilter plate on the front of the camera. That works, but there is a downside. You lose access to the tilt adjustment screws on the tilt plate. So the ZWO does sell an optional back adjustable tilt plate that solves this problem. It lets you adjust the tilt from the other side of the camera, but I didn't have one on hand and I didn't think to order it in time. So I just wanted to make it work with what I already had lying around. I ended up repurposing an old off-axis guider that no longer has a prism. It was just an empty ring at this point. I sealed the side port to avoid any light leaks and I placed it in front of the camera to shift the tilt plate forward. It's definitely not the most elegant solution, but it works and for now I'm just gonna stick to it. Tonight I have my camera paired with my Artec 250-1000 Newtonian telescope. Um, I'm thinking of maybe going for a galaxy. Hopefully we'll get enough clear sky time tonight, but we'll just see how it goes. I'm just gonna wait for it to get dark now. Welcome back to my light polluted balcony with partially cloudy skies. After some weather issues and some technical problems that you can see from that random cable, um, I'm having power issues with my mount, so the quickest way for me to fix that was just to get the other cable from my other mount over here. Um, but the camera itself is working really well, so I am shooting a part of the Veil Nebula. The reason I chose it is because, especially with a longer focal length, I think we all want to know, including myself, how that guiding is going to work with a narrow bend filter. So far, I feel like it is going okay, even from my light polluted balcony. Uh, with the two second shots, it is quite stable. For your information, uh, this is a Bortle 7 region. It is an SQM 18.91 last time I measured, so it is really light polluted. And with the two second shots, with this setup, which is an f3.9, I'm able to guide with the 7 nanometer narrow band filter. Now, of course, if you have a 3 nanometer bandpass filter, that would be a whole other story. Anyway, let's see how the rest of the night goes. Hey, welcome back. I'm at my computer now and I've downloaded all the images from the night. As you saw, 
it was a very cloudy night, so I didn't get much integration time, just over two hours. This has been happening consistently over the past week that I've been trying to use this camera. We'll go through all the images I took and then I'll share my overall thoughts on the camera. This is the stack that I got with the hydrogen filter. It is actually not bad. I managed to get almost two hours of hydrogen, though I got almost no oxygen at all. I also took a bias, which is actually a bias of 1000 frames. Um, it looks exactly as you would expect it to look, even if I overstretch it. And then I also took a dark, even though I, I don't condone using darks for these sensors, I think that they make no sense, but I did it just for comparison's sake. So this one had no hot pixels and then if I stretch it, it just looks like a dark. So this is 300 seconds taken at zero degrees. And then here is the final image. It is very red due to the lack of oxygen signal. And of course, I also added RGB stars. But the main goal was to just to see how the camera would perform guiding at a longer focal length of 1000 millimeters and also with narrow band filters from my light polluted balcony. In that sense, the cloudy conditions were almost helpful, actually adding another layer of difficulty to test under. As I mentioned last night, guiding worked really well. I sometimes brought it down to one second exposures, but to play it safe, I kept it at two seconds for most of the night and that was perfectly fine. Again, these were the seven nanometer ZWO filters. If you're using three nanometer filters, your experience may differ. That said, I was pleasantly surprised. I had my doubts about how well it would all work. But now I'm quite convinced this setup on my big Newtonian is the most convenient thing ever. By the way, I'm linking everything that I've used for this below, so feel free to check it out. In terms of price point and who this is for, unlike the entry level 585 MC Air, which was also announced today, this camera is clearly aimed at more advanced users both because of the higher cost and the added complexity of uh, mono setup. It retails for $24.99, but don't forget that you'll likely need to add the cost of a filter wheel and the seven two inch filters. The filter wheel isn't strictly mandatory, but I highly recommend it. I think that this is a very solid option for those who are thinking of upgrading from a color to a mono setup, but also for those of us already owning a mono setup with a filter wheel and an off-axis guider, especially if you've been struggling with limited back focus and just couldn't fit other accessories in like a CAA. Now, who is this not for then? If you're not happy using the ASI Air, this isn't the right choice for you. As I've said before, while testing the original 2600 MC Air, yes, it is technically compatible with ASCOM via Alpaca, but it is not very convenient and it is quite slow. This camera is really designed to be used as an all-in-one system. So if you're comfortable with that, I think it is a great option. And since the price difference between the non-Air version and this one is not so significant. You pay 2000 for the regular mono camera and then 2300 for the duo and now 2500 for this one. So if you consider how much it would cost to buy the ASI Air and the guiding setup separately, the Air is definitely the more convenient option. I do want to mention while my setup worked great at 1000 millimeter focal length with narrowband filters, I probably wouldn't even try to do narrowband imaging with this camera on something like my C14. I honestly wouldn't expect to see any guide stars at all. So keep that in mind. But for small and medium scopes, probably up to a thousand millimeter focal length, I think you'll be just fine. It is a super convenient way to reduce clutter, simplify the setup and just avoid the cable mess. With the larger sensor, I think this is also a very good option for a wide field setup, a wide field 
travel rig, especially now that the Milky Way Nebula season is starting. It is a great match for a small telescope under dark skies, but personally, I think I'll mostly be using it on my Newtonian. Let me know what you think about the new camera. Do you think the air concept is convenient? And are you thinking of giving it a try? Thank you so much for watching and I wish you clear skies.